Welcome. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to graph f of x equals negative 2 sine of x. So to graph trigonometric functions, the main important thing is we want to find all the information that we know about it and then put them on a, and then get set to graphing them. The first thing I always like to figure out is the amplitude. And I'm just going to write the amplitude as AMP. So remember the amplitude, if we were going to look at our standard um, form of our function, which for this one it's going to be f of x equals a times sine of bx minus c plus d. All right, remember there's certain transformation. The, the amplitude was the absolute value of a. Well, in this case, we have negative 2 is our absolute value. So therefore, the amplitude is going to be 2. That means 2 is going to be my half distance from my maximum to my minimum point on my graph. The next thing I want to figure out is the period. Now remember, the period is the distance that it take, took for our graph to complete one cycle. So to find period, what you do is you take your original period from your parent graph, 2 pi, and divide it by b. Well, remember, b is going to be your coefficient of x. In this case, we have 2 pi over 1, which equals 2 pi. Now, the next thing I noticed about my a, my a was negative. So that means I'm going to have a reflection. If you remember the video on reflections, that means I'm going to have a reflection over the x-axis. So I'm just going to write that down, reflect the x-axis. All right. So then let's go ahead and take a look at our um, kind of critical points. We look at our period. And once you determine your period, when you want to find the critical points, remember the critical points were like your maximum, your minimum, your x and your x-intercepts. So what you do to find your critical points is you take your period and you divide it by 4. Because there's technically four important point, critical points we're looking at within one period. So my period in this case is 2 pi divided by 4, which means pi halves. So when I go ahead and graph my function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have my four critical points. That means the distance between these four critical points is going to be pi halves. Then the last thing I'm just going to look at is to make sure there's no other, um, well, actually, not even that. I, um, I want to make sure there's, no gonna, there's not going to be any transformations, right? any shifting left or right. Well, therefore, since my, I don't have a C or a D in this problem, I'm not going to be shifting my graph. However, it's still important for us to be able to take a look at how to determine where to start and end if there were transformations. So what I do is I always take what's ever inside my function, and I set that equal to 0. And that's going to be where a good place to start your function. So I have x equals 0. And then to find out where the first period ends, you can take whatever's inside your function, usually bx minus c. In this case, we just have x. And you set that equal to 2 pi. That means I'm going to start this graphing at 0. And it's going to end at 2 pi. So no matter what my phase shift is, that's where I'd start and then I'd end. Um, well, in this case, I have no phase shift, so that's what I'm saying. But you can still, what I did is instead of just x, you can take whatever's inside your function, you set it equal to 0, and sometimes, depending on your phase shift, that's actually going to change. But in this case, since we have no phase shift, we're all good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first set up my critical point. So we know that the distance for each critical point is pi halves. So I have pi halves. This distance from here to here is pi halves, which is pi. At another pi halves, I have 3 pi over 2. And then I have 2 pi. Now I'm also going to do this in the negative direction. So I have negative pi halves, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. So to graph this, it's always helpful to kind of remember what the parent function looks like. And remember our parent function of sine of x went up to 1 and down to negative 1. It always started or across at the origin, 0, 0, and immediately went up to here, crossed at pi, went down to 3 pi over 2, and then came back up. And then in the negative direction, followed the same pattern, where we had our maximum and our minimum points. So what we notice about our new graph is the, really the only thing that's different is we have a reflection of the x-axis, and we have an amplitude of 2. So therefore, my new graph, rather than going all the way up to 1, is now going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. 
the other thing is we know that now my points, it's all going to be reflected about the x-axis. So instead of the sine graph going up, it's actually initially going to go down. And it's not going to go down to 1. It's going to go down now to negative 2. So as I go down to negative 2, it's going to have to rebound back up. And we still said a critical point was at pi. So then it's going to come back up to 3 pi over 2 and then come down. Then here, to go and graph this reflection, come up, make your maximum, come back down, next critical point, and then go through. So the main important thing when graphing is you can see that this is now my graph, f of x equals negative 2 sine of x. The important thing about graphing is you just want to make sure you find your critical points and then understand what the shape of the graph is, and th therefore you can um, simply graph it by adding to the parent graph. So my red was f of sine of x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph when you have a reflection and a new uh, amplitude. Thanks.